message that is, the, the title for the message is Super Power, all right? Super Power in the name of Jesus. And last time I preached here was uh, last Wednesday. My son preached the last two Sundays. And last Wednesday I preached here, um, the message was about miracles. That if you still believe in miracles and, and that God is still in the miracle business. How many people believe that God is still in the miracle business? Hallelujah. We talked about that uh, every miracle is connected to a misery. That if we, and we mentioned that like the gentleman that was by the pool of Bethesda that was paralyzed for 38 years, that Jesus comes to him and tells him, do you want to get healed? Now we, we hear about the miracle that took place, but we don't really hear about the misery he was in and how he smelled and how he was stuck there and he couldn't even rise himself up. And we talk about the woman with the issue of blood and we hear about the miracle, but the, the years that she was bleeding and the misery that she, she endured, all this misery to receive a miracle. And myself losing my daughter to see the miracle take place at the Alamo Dome. And many miracles came about, but through a misery that took place. And so we talked about miracles and how God is such a faithful God. I got many phone calls afterwards, uh, lots of messages that people receive a miracle. You see, it, it is for people that are all in that will receive a miracle. People that are, that are sold out to Jesus, hallelujah. I'm not talking about uh, uh, people that are mediocre and people that are lukewarm, people that are one foot in, one foot out, or people that come maybe once in a while whenever you feel like it. Or I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a radical, filled, holy ghost, man, woman of God that's been through some hell and high waters and say, man, I've been, I've been working hard. I've been, I've been doing what, what I got to do, and I'm going to receive a miracle here today. And we're talking about men and women of God that, that you actually even ask God, like, God, I mean, I, I've been praying. I'm praying for a miracle, and everybody else is getting blessed. And, and what about me? And, 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 and then on last Wednesday I said, usually people say, well, this is your year, but we're seven months and a few days into the year but I, like I said last Wednesday, the Lord had brought me here to say, listen, the next six months is going to be your, your six months. In other words, your next in the name of Jesus. And I don't know who this word is for, but you need to receive it in the name of Jesus because you have endured in the name of Jesus. And, and if, if God says you're next, then you're next. But it's only for those that believe. Hallelujah. And then, uh, and then on, on Sunday, um, I preached at Elevate Ministry and the message that I preached was, the title was, you can't win without making big moves. You can't win without making big moves. And, and I'm, I'm telling you what I preached about because I'm going to what I'm going to preach about tonight. I talked about in 2 Kings um, about four men that had leprosy. They were at the gate and they began to talk to each other and said, if we stay here, we're going to die. Because the men with leprosy, those are the ones that were the outcasts, the untouchables. They can't go into the city. They, they were not wanted. And they started talking to each other saying, what if provision shows up? What if the city that we want to walk into, because there was a big famine. What if we go and, the, and there is food? They're not going to give us nothing. But if we stay here, we're going to die. But if we go and we surrender ourselves to the army, if they catch us, they might spare our lives. But if they kill us, then we will die. And I preached this before, in my, and it was like, should I go or should I stay? But it was good because I want to talk to some people that have been sitting by the gate for a long time. That you're procrastinating and God has a miracle for you, but you're staying there and saying, man. And I'm here to tell you, it's time for you to get up, hallelujah, and start walking towards your miracle in the name of Jesus. If you don't walk, you're going to stay and you're going to die anyways. You don't have nothing to lose, in other words. You have everything to gain. And if you're alive in 2022... God must have a plan for you. And you must get up and move in the name of Jesus. And the Bible goes on to say in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, whenever you want to read that story, it goes on to say that when they got up, they started walking. Can you imagine these four lepers, men were walking, saying, you know what, just, you think they're going to kill us? You think they're going to stone us? Or what's going to happen when we get there? And as they were talking, the Bible says that as they were walking, the enemy on the other side, God caused them to hear this, uh, a noise of chariots and horses and of a great army. There was not chariots and horses and a great army coming. There was four men that decided to get up and just say, we don't have nothing to lose. Let's just go. And these four men, because they decided to get up and move, God started to move. 
And he caused the enemy to hear like an army and horses. Can you imagine all these horses and chariots? And it was just four men just walking. What are we going to die? But they were moving. So you might, you might walk kind of scared or not knowing what's going to happen. But at least you're moving. Hallelujah. At least you're not just stuck. You're getting up and saying, man, I'm going to move. This year, 2022 is not going to be like 2021. It's going to be a, a new year. And the Bible says that as they were moving... God caused the enemy to hear all these armies and all these horses and stuff. And there was really nothing there. When the four men arrived at the city, they arrived saying, man, we're going we're gonna to get killed here. But they arrived and they found the city was empty. They found the tents, silver, gold, provision, lots and lots of food, lots of stuff. Wondering like, where's everybody at? Little did they know that God caused them to run for their lives. And they were able to be so blessed just because, can you imagine if they would have just stayed behind? They would have missed their blessing. But because they got up and took that big move, they won. They were able to be blessed and they were eating so much that they felt even guilty. and said, man, let's call somebody else. Let's bless someone else. Nobody was blessing them, but they were so blessed that now it was, it, in other words, things, things turned around for them in the name of Jesus. That's a word right there. Things turned around for them in the name of Jesus. And there's some people here that you are in need of a turnaround. And I'm here to tell you, you came to the right place at the right time, but you can't experience a turnaround without this superpower I'm going to talk about here today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I want you to go to the book of Ephesians. And it's a, it's a familiar scripture. Everybody knows it. It's where you, you, you hear about the full armor of God. It's Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm only going to read one verse. And that's it. And I'm going to ask you if you can do me a favor and stand for that one word. For that word is powerful. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. It's towards the back in the New Testament. Superpowers. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Chapter 6 of Ephesians, verse 10. When you're there, please say amen. Finally, somebody say finally. That means he's, he's, he said a lot. And this is finally, finally, after all the things I've done for you, after all the miracles you experienced, after all those troubles that you didn't know you were going to make it, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power. Somebody say power. Hallelujah. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Woo. Father God, I ask you that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. And I ask you that you open up the ears of all the men and women that are in this house. Remove all distractions. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name and everyone say amen, amen. You may have a seat. All right, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want this superpower, you got to listen. Uh, amen. Here we go. Everybody listening? Nobody move, nobody get hurt. All right. I just said not to move, John. Why are you moving? <laughs> he's not even listening. Didn't I say open up your ears so the guy can speak to you? And Josh is just walking, like he's not even listening to me. My son's walking around like he didn't even hear me either. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess they got the superpowers. You can do whatever you want. Go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. Um, we have heard time and time again. That we can do all things, hallelujah, through Christ. And, it, and, it, and it's so true. Uh, the impossible will be accomplished. And I want you to really take notes. I wrote these things down. The impossible we, will be accomplished in our lives when we yield to God. I'm going to say it again. The impossible will be accomplished in our lives when we yield to God. To the God that is in us and allow him to work through us. It is the Holy Spirit living in us that will work through us and enable us to do great and mighty works. I'm going to talk about the superpower. And I want you to listen up here um, tonight. Because I'm not going to go into uh, the battle and put the helmet of salvation on all that. I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about the first verse that I read. And, and I want you to really take it all in. The question is, we should be all asking ourselves tonight is, how do I yield to God and allow him to work through me? That's the question. 
how do I yield to God and allow him to work through me? Because without him, we can't do nothing. Amen? With him, with, with him, we can do all things. So to get the power, how do we get the, the power of God? How do we get that superpower that is well needed on our journey? My son has been talking about the danger zone and talking about the promised land and, and very encouraging words and, and how to cross over to the other side. And, and we talked about Moses. He died and he wasn't able to cross over to the, to the promised land. But there was a new generation, a generation of Joshua that crossed over to the other side. But some, someone had to die. Something had to die in order for them to go to the promised land. And I know there's a lot of us have experienced some kind of death or maybe we lost something. Or if you haven't lost something, you need to let go of the 2021. Let go of last month. Let go of yesterday. For today is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is another day. Let us rejoice in this day. So when we cross over, we forgot about what happened yesterday. Because we can't, we can't experience anything good. Uh, if we're still stuck in the past, right? And here, here is this question we should all be asking. How do I yield to God and allow him to work through me? Now, here we go. If we're going to yield to God and see him work through us, then we have to yield to love. Somebody say love, all right? If love is working in us, then God is working through us. If love is working in us, then God is working through us. In other words, if you don't have no love, you can speak in tongues and you can do whatever. But if you're mean and you're ugly, then you're just nothing but a bunch of hot air. But if you have love, if you have Jesus, then God can work through you. Hallelujah. Because if Jesus lives in you, that means love lives in you because Jesus is love. Amen. When I talked about a couple of weeks ago when that man came to my face and told me, shut up, I don't want to hear nothing that comes out of your mouth. And I kept my mouth shut and some of you were like, mm, you're going to let him punk you out like that. And uh, <laughs> it takes a lot for you to just keep your mouth shut. I had a phone call the other day from one of my spiritual sons. I don't know where he's at. He's somewhere here. I won't say who he is. He said, hey, dad. Mm. Wow. What was that? That was the power of God. I like those effects. And he, and he said, hey, Dad, man, I, 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 how did you do it? How did you tell me? How did you do it? I said, I didn't say nothing. Go, but how? I said, just the power of God, the love of God. He goes, I know you want to say something. And I told him, before you say anything, he goes, no, Dad, you don't understand. He told me some stuff and da 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 da, da. And, and he came at me and, uh, oh, I'm just upset. I go, is there a mirror next to you, anywhere close to you, a mirror? If you're here for the first time, you don't know what I'm talking about. But there was a guy that told me to shut up and I was really upset. But when I went upstairs, there was a mirror in front of me. And I told the mirror what I wanted to tell that guy. What? <laughs> yeah, point at me one more time. Do that again. I'll break your finger. But I was talking to the mirror. Nobody was there. And, and, and sometimes you have to encourage yourself. You have to, you win more battles by keeping your mouth shut. You don't have to say a word. God takes care of every single thing. Amen. So for us to be able to be quiet and not respond and have a good attitude is going to take a lot of him, a lot of love. And once we yield to love, then love begins to work in us and then God can work through us. This love of God gives us access. Here we go. This love of God gives us access to the power of God. You got it? So the love of God gives us access to the power of God. If you, if you have love, in other words, you have Jesus, then I have full access to God. In other words, I can, somebody can tell me whatever they want to tell me, and I can learn how to just keep my mouth shut because the battle's not mine. I have full access to Jesus. God, if you want to get to me, you're going to get go through my father first. And to go through my father, man, that's some big stuff right there. So I can walk in peace. And, and I know that this journey that we're going and we're crossing over, 2022, great things are coming. There's a lot of open doors are coming. You hear pastors talk about all this stuff. But what's missing is how do you get to that point? Is there going to be battles? Is there going to be fights? Is there going to be struggles, obstacles? Of course, there's going to be all these things. And a lot of people miss the mark 
They become like Israelites. What should have taken two weeks takes them years and years and years. Just ask yourself or just, you know, yourself, like, how old am I? You're 30, 40, 50 years old and you're still lost. You're still angry. You still, you still get triggered. Then you need to say, God, I surrender. Um, you know how you tell you, you're not getting any younger. You're getting older. The old gangster is gone. There's a new gangster for Jesus over here. You got to let go of how you used to walk, how you used to talk, and just say, you know what? I'm a new creation in Christ. And, 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 and God is love, then I need to act like Jesus. Jesus, because Ephesians 5 says that we're supposed to be imitators of Jesus, of Christ. And to be imitators of God, it takes a lot of superpower. And the only one that can give you that strength is the one that has all the superpowers, and that's Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no superhero that can do what Jesus can do. There's only one superhero, and that's Jesus. Amen. So when that love is working in our heart, we will see God's power work through us in our lives. That's as simple as it gets. And then you can get phone calls from other people and say, man, how did you handle that? I said, man, I never thought I was going to get a phone call that how did you handle that? Because back in the world, I will tell you how to handle it. But we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. How we used to handle things before, we handle it different now. When you hear, you know what, you have to fight. And right away, Christians say, yeah, I'm going to fight. I'm going to get off the cross for a little bit. No, don't get off at all. Why are you going to get off for a little bit? Jesus, I'll be right back. I'm going to handle this. No, no. The thing is, is it, it, <laughs> when I say you fight, you fight the good fight of faith. In other words, you, you fight on your knees with your hands lifted up saying, hallelujah, praise your name, Jesus. And you... As long as you be praising God, as long as Moses had his hands lifted up, he would have the victory all the time. And Moses at one point got tired. That's why he was surrounded with some great men of God that would lift up his hands when he was tired and said, I know that you're tired, but I'm not going to let you fight alone. I'm here to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. You need to surround yourself with men and women that will lift up your hands and say, you know what? They're not going to tell you. Go and tell them something. Go and fight. Don't let yourself. You, you should have said something. No. If you have friends like that, you got to get them out of the way. You need men and women of God to say, man, the battle's not yours. The battle belongs to God. You just be still and know that God is God. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do. We need to understand that if the love lives in us, then God, God, is, God will take care of the rest. So we have to understand the power of God cannot show up without the love of God being in place. I'm going to say it again. The power of God cannot show up without the love of God being in place. So we go to, we go to this book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. And before, before Paul begins his message uh, on our spiritual armor, before he even begins the message about put on the full armor of God, Paul here, he begins his message before he even talks about the spiritual armor, he, he urges us to receive supernatural power. Watch this. This is what I'm talking about. What does it mean to be strong in the Lord? Because that's what it says. My brethren, be finally be strong in the Lord. What does it mean to be strong in the Lord? First, the word strong. Now, if you're taking notes, first, the word strong is taken from the word. Uh, um, and I'm gonna, I wrote this down in dunamo. In dunamo, like with an E-N and then like dunamis, D-U-M, if you're, you're going to write it down, E-N, right? And then D, as in dog, U-N-A-M-O-O, -O, okay? In dunamo, which is a compound of the Greek word. Now, in and dunamis, the word in means in, E-N means in, in, like inside. And the word dunamis means explosive, strength, ability, and power, hallelujah. Uh, stay with me. The word dunamis is where we get the word dynamite. Anybody remember that, that movie? Dynamite. Okay. When these two words are compared together or compounded together, the new word udanamo describes, watch this, an empowering or an inner strengthening. It's like being infused. Watch, it's going to get excited here. It's like being infused with an, an excessive dose of dynamic inner strength and ability. I'm going to say it again. This word, when you put it together, hey amen, this, and, uh, this is like being infused 
an excessive dose of dynamic inner strength and ability. Man, can you imagine the superpowers? When, when you hear the word dunamis, the power of God coming in you because it's in. It has to go in something. It comes in you and then you have this excessive dynamic inner strength and ability to do things. When they see you doing things, they say, man, it can't be him. No, but it's the Jesus that lives in me. Hallelujah. It is not my might, but it's his might. It's not my strength, but it's his strength. When I am weak, he is strong. Hallelujah. When I can't do it, I call on the name of Jesus and my God, he will take me, he will lead me, he will direct me and he will fight every single battle for me. This is like the power that is, like, watch this. This is like a power that is being deposited into something, a container, a vessel. The very nature of this word means that there necessarily must be some type of receiver, hallelujah, for this power to be deposited into. There must be some kind of receiver for this power to be deposited into. Hallelujah. There must be someone in this house that you say, Hallelujah, I got the love of God and I'm a vessel. Pour down your dunamis. Pour down your power upon me. You have to be a vessel that God can pour down into that. Hallelujah. This is, this is such an amazing thing because it says that some type of receiver for the power to be deposited into. Anyone ready for this superpower? I know I am in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the reason Paul urges us. Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong. Be strong. His word carries the idea. Watch this. Receive a supernatural strengthening and internal deposit of power into, into your inner man. I'm going to say it again. This is the reason Paul urges us. Finally, my brethren, be strong. His word carries the idea. Receive a supernatural strengthening and internal deposit of power into your inner man. Oh, man. That's some good stuff right here. God is the giver. He is the giver of this explosive power. And according to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 that we just read, we are the receptacles into which this power is to be deposited. That's who we are. Paul here wasn't simply suggesting that we receive the power. He was actually commanding us to receive it. And furthermore, to receive it as soon as possible. See, if we're going to receive the power, the, the superpower, we need it more than ever right now. Because there are some people that are walking around already just weak, ready to give up. There are some people that are ready to just turn around and just give up. There are some people that are in the middle, not realizing that the end is just the same distance as the beginning. And they're talking about, man, maybe, we still, maybe this is not for us. But I'm here to tell you, you came too far to give up now. You came too far to quit. You came too far to throw in the towel. This is where you strengthen yourself in the name of Jesus. This is when you say, you know what? You call on the power, which is almighty Jesus. The name that is above all names. Hallelujah. And when you call on the name of Jesus, how many people here know that there is power in the name of Jesus? So when you call on Jesus, man, and he comes upon you, man, no matter what comes your way, no matter how you feel, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Finally, my brethren. Paul, he wasn't just suggesting, he was commanding us. Like, this is the time that you just, you just seek God, get closer to God. Just dwell in the presence of God. Just go all in for Jesus. It's so sad that uh, nowadays it's not the way it should be. When I was going to Elevate, there's a flea market in Morrison Road. Y'all know that flea market. Sunday morning, jam-packed. Security all over the place cars all over getting there at four or five in the morning to get a spot i said man if the church can be lined up to come and receive a word from god if it could be jam-packed for jesus if they could be hungry hallelujah if they could just want more of him and imagine the, the whole church all over the united states full filled the name of jesus but it's filled with so much dynamic it's filled with so much division it's filled with so much confusion 
Families are arguing. Families are getting separated. Children are leaving. People are quitting. People, they don't want to, they've been hurt through church time and time again. Pastors are not preaching what they should. They're putting so much watered down messages. We need men and women of God that will bring the truth and nothing but the truth. Like a Philadelphia church and stand for what is right. Stand for what is truth. Because the word of God says that the truth will set you free. Is there anyone here that's been set free in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. That's the power of God. To open their hearts, our hearts to receive a brand new touch of God's power into our lives. We got to really, really seek more of God. Paul, he knew we desperately need this supernatural power. He knows that we desperately need the supernatural power. Anyone here need a supernatural power? We all need it. In other words, if you tried it yourself and it hasn't happened, you need the supernatural power of God. In other words, when people see it, it's like, how in the world did he do it? It couldn't be him. Why? Because it couldn't be me. It had to be Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm talking about when you walk into the hospital and you got stage four cancer and you, you, you got oxygen and you can't breathe. And they said you might want to call the family together because he's just kind of like already dead and if he does go home he's gonna be a vegetable and all of a sudden you see him at church greeting people say man how are you doing hold on aren't you the one uh, that was me but something supernatural happened all I had to do is just trust in the Lord and my God he showed up and he showed off because no one's gonna tell me or give me a date when I'm gonna die my God put me on this earth he's the one who's gonna take me out of this earth he's the, have, the one that has a final say so that's our God. I'm talking about a supernatural miracle. We need the power of God in our lives so, so much right now. We need the power of God that when we walk, we know that no matter what demon, what devil gets in front of us, we will knock anything that comes in front of us trying to stop us to get to our destination. Because the devil, he'll throw all his little demons all against you. But when you got the dunamis power of God, no matter what comes in, he could be the devil right here and say, man, I, I, don't, I don't see nothing. I just, I just keep on walking. I, I, I know who I am. The power is in me. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't even see that coming before I used to get scared but now I go walk right through it because if God is for me who could be against me no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper that's when we just stand strong and say Lord hallelujah thank you for giving me the strength because if it hadn't been for you I wouldn't be where I'm at right now God is so good man can you imagine just going through things like that like nothing can stop you like in other words the anointing is so heavy upon you. That little thing, you don't even see it. When you used to see it before, it will stop you and say, man, what am I going to do? But because the power is in you, hallelujah, greater is he that is in you. No matter what comes at you, oh man, I saw you last year. I defeated you last year. I'll defeat you this year, hallelujah. You came at me one way last year and I took you out. I'll take you out this year again. You got to understand that every single person has fought a Goliath, hallelujah. Every single person has beat something. Is there anyone here that you have beat and defeated something in your life? And if you did it once, you can do it again, hallelujah. If you took it out once, you can take it out again. Ain't no devil in hell can take you out because you're a child of the Most High. All you gotta do is lift up your hands and call on the name of Jesus because there's power in his name. Come on, somebody call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, things will, things will come. Come on, tell your neighbor, things will come. But if God is for you, come on, tell your neighbor, if God is for you, who could be against you? You need the power of God. Come on, tell your neighbor, you need the power of God to come upon your life. Now ask him, are you ready to receive the power of God? I want to see the reaction. I don't know about you, but are you ready to receive the power of God? Come on, let's stand and let's worship, let's praise in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Let the power of God fall, Father God. Let the power of God fall, Father God, upon the man and the woman that are in this house, dear Lord. Let them receive the power. Let them receive the anointing. 
cover them, fall fresh upon this place in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remain standing, remain standing. Paul knew that we desperately needed this supernatural power in order to successfully combat the attacks of the enemy. Every single person here is facing some kind of, of battle. In order for us to defeat that, we need the superpower. We need the power of God. Now watch this. He attacks us every day. And here Paul commands all believers everywhere to be infused as one. Be infused with supernatural strength and ability. Infused. Be empowered with the special touch of God's strength. You must receive the inner strength in it. I'm going to say it again. To be infused with supernatural strength. Can you imagine, man? Just being infused. You're standing there. And the reason I tell you to stand is that you stand there with your hands open up. And then you expect to be infused with this supernatural power to come in. Have you ever seen people just fall out? And then, and, 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 and some, some, some people just hold on because they're afraid to fall. And, and it's nothing to do with the pastor. It's nothing to do with the man. It has to do with the power of God. When the power of God hits you, you can't control yourself. And I'm talking about that kind of infusion where right there where you're at, you feel like, whoops, something came upon you. Then you begin to cry because of the power of the Holy Ghost. That you come here with a hard heart and Jesus reaches his hand and he pumps your heart one time. That every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is God, that he is the Lord of Lords, that he is our Savior. Savior. Is there any man and woman of God that can honestly say, you know what? I want to be infused by the Holy Ghost. I want to be taken over by the Holy Ghost. If that's you, I want you to come forward real quick. I want you to receive the power of God. I want you to receive the strength of God. I want you to receive the infusion that God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Here we go. Here we go. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, just come forward. Get a little closer. Scoot over to the side. Scoot over to the side. Here we go. And it makes no sense, but you say that's a faith that is for. When I see a flood, you see a promise. When I see a grave, you see a door. When I'm at my end, you see where the future starts. I don't know how you make it go. guys I want you to just take a deep breath I'm serious if you're way in the back in the front where were you at don't worry about the person as you take a deep breath and I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to expect the Spirit of God to come upon you some of you begin to speak in tongues some of you are gonna uh, feel the presence of God so uh, so powerful and, and I want you to just receive it you didn't come here for nothing man I want you to leave here filled with the Holy Ghost I want you to leave here with the power of God. And maybe you say, I never experienced that. I'm afraid. Fear not, the Lord says. God says, fear not, for I am here. I'm here to infuse you in the name of Jesus. So I want you to think back as you close your eyes. Come on, close your eyes and lift up your hands. I want you to think back to where you were in the beginning. And then I want you to, re to remember your journey to where you're at right now. You will begin to feel the presence of God. Tears will begin to flow down your face because you're going to realize that the only way you made it this far is because of the power of God. And I'm here to tell you, I'm remembering those days right now to where I'm at right now. And I thank God that if it hadn't been for God, I wouldn't be standing right now. So take a, take a minute of your time. Receive the power of God upon your life right now. 
Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about the person in front of you. Just lift up your hands and begin to open up your mouth. You're going to begin to speak in the heavenly languages. You're going to begin to hear the voice of God. You're going to begin to feel the Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, fall upon these men and women. Fall upon these men. Come on, receive it in the name of Jesus. You don't need no man Open to lay hands on you. You don't need nobody to touch you. The Holy Open Spirit is about to touch you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise you. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus.
on, somebody call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here we go, church. I want you to lift up your hands from the back to the front. Say, Lord Jesus, infuse me with your power. And Father God, forgive me. For you are an awesome God. I want to be all in, Lord. Full force. I want to be that Philadelphia church. That faithful church. And Lord, I thank you. Because Lord, I, I couldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for you. Today, I ask you that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus, I want my name written on the book of life. And I want to thank you, Father, for being with me, for being for me, for never leaving me or forsaking me. Today is a new day. I wipe my tears. I stand strong. I stand tall because I'm a, I'm a child of the Most High. And devil, get behind me. You got no power. You got no authority over my life. Come on, somebody say, I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm above and I'm not beneath. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, turn around, give somebody a high five. Hallelujah. of a believer his supernatural flow of power power will turn that normal believer into a spiritual giant Whoa! hallelujah <laughs> come on turn around look at your neighbor and say what's up spiritual giant <laughs> I'm glad you're in the house <laughs> you may go back to your seats we're almost done here <laughs> Come on, let's give it up for the Lord here tonight. What a blessing. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Listen guys, to, to remain a spiritual giant, you got to stay engaged. You got to get connected. I tell you the story and I'll say it again. There was a man that wanted to leave the church. And he told the pastor, I'm leaving because I see too many things going on in the church. And the, the pastor said, before you leave, do me a favor. He said, no, you don't understand. That person over there by the door, he calls himself a leader. He doesn't act like a leader. That person over there, they don't even treat me well. And so forth and so forth. Complain, complain, complain. The pastor said, I, do me a favor. Before you leave the church... Walk around the sanctuary two times, but don't spill one drop of the water. And the water was to the top, to the rim. So the, pa the person to the pastor, deal, I, I'll do it. So that person walked around the church once real closely, real slowly, 
and then walked around a second time, real slowly, very careful. And he brought the glass to the pastor. And he told the pastor, look, not one drop that I spill. And the pastor said, did you see that person in the door over there, how they were acting? He said, no. What about the person over there with that ugly attitude? No. What about her? No. I, I wasn't looking at that. You told me not to spill the drink. So I have my eyes on the glass. And the pastor said, exactly. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't put your eyes on man. Don't put your eyes on woman. You're not here for them. You're here for the king of kings. Hallelujah. You're here for the Lord of lords. The one that woke you up this morning. The one that infused you here tonight with his power. So come on. Praise the name of Jesus one last time here tonight and raise the roof. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. Praise his name and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for driving me home. Thank you, Father God, for believing in me and never giving up on me. Thank you, Father, for being in this house tonight. I'm here for you, Lord. If you keep your eyes on the glass, you won't be hopping from church to church. You won't be talking about anyone else because all you have to talk about and everything that comes out of your mouth, like Ephesians 5 says, is nothing but blessings. Did you see what he did? No. Nope. Did you hear what she said? No. Nope. I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed, and I'm too chosen to be frozen. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. See, when you, when you say that, you got to do it. I, I, I'm, I'm too blessed to be stressed, right? And I'm too anointed to be disappointed with that kind of attitude. And I'm too chosen. And then you do this to be frozen. And then you, maybe you can boom, 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 whatever. But, <laughs> but you got to keep on walking. You got to keep on praising God. And when you get rooted... Then you have people like Janie and say, man, I've been here for 15 years. I've been here for the beginning. Why? Has she seen some things? Yeah. Has she heard some things? Yeah. But she's not here for this man. She's here for that man. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He will never let you down. A man and a woman, they will let you down. But my God, he will never, ever let you down. Come on. Praise his name. Hallelujah.